everyone so it has been a really 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 long time since I made a video and um, the reason why I am making this video is because I was asked by Avalon to be part of a vlog hop about southern hemisphere pagans and what this season means to us and the whole it being Beltane when it's actually Halloween or Sawain in the northern hemisphere um, and what that means for us and um, that whole thing. So, um, yes, I've been really, really quiet on YouTube lately. Um, a big part of the reason for that is that my mother-in-law has had a really long illness and she recently succumbed to her battle with cancer. So on Saturday night she passed away peacefully in her home. And I'm going to try not to cry in this video, but it's been really, really hard on me just the fact that she's actually now gone and she's been sick for such a long time and we've watched her struggle and we've watched her, her suffer with so much pain and she's now gone and um, just the void that that's left in all of our lives and us coming to terms with that and everything like that. So... Um, yeah, that's what I've been going through, but I am really, really hoping to get back into making videos. So, um, yeah, if I'm not making any sense, I'm sorry. I'm drinking a little bit of wine, which I'm not supposed to be because I've been doing Oxoba. And um, I just figure I started Oxoba early, so I'm going to finish it up early. I've, yeah, I, <laughs> I didn't drink for a little bit at the end of last month. And this whole thing with my mother-in-law... Um, passing away this month like it was just totally unforeseen so um yes I am drinking a little bit at the moment so <laughs> um yeah so basically um yeah it's a really interesting thing sort of since I was a kid I remember seeing things on tv about Halloween and um the whole commercialized Halloween I guess is about the whole spooky vampire werewolves zombies um, Frankenst Dr. Frankenstein's monsters and things like that and um, that is kind of a distortion of the original meaning of the festival of Samhain which was about a sacred celebration or a commemoration of the dead and um, communing with the dead and how the dead is still a part of our lives and our ancestors how they still walk with us, us each day we we carry their blood within our veins and their DNA and they're still a part of us and they're still a part of our lives and it was a really sacred thing and I guess that was just kind of distorted with um, I guess non-pagans and their misunderstanding their ignorance I guess you could say and it became commercialized of course like everything does these days you know everybody's out to make a buck and everything's a hallmark a hallmark festival where they just want to sell cards and decorations and stuff like that and especially here in Australia with with Halloween becoming commercialized it's really just a a really big example of a capitalist society that's paying more attention to what's going on in the shops than what's actually going on in nature because here it's not even autumn you know we haven't got pumpkins in season um we don't have autumn leaves falling it's spring here everything's coming to life we've got flowers blooming um the jacaranda trees here are just a riot of color they're absolutely beautiful and the sap is rising and you can feel that beautiful um energy but the one thing that Sawain and um, Beltane do have in common is that they are both about the thinning of the veil just in a slightly different way um, because Sawain is about the thinning of the veil so that we can communicate with the dead and at Beltane it's more about new life coming in and being able to communicate with the spirits of nature and the fae and that kind of thing. At least that's what it's about for me personally so that's the kind of sense that I get from both of them. And um, yeah I'm not criticizing commercial Halloween necessarily. I think that for the most part it's harmless fun. It's a bit of, it's a bit of fun for the kids and people get into it and I don't think it's a bad thing at all. But um, yeah so I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, what this time of year means to me and what I'm getting up to at this time of year. And um, yeah, so um, on the day of the 31st of October, we are actually having a funeral for 
my mother-in-law so um, that is going to take up most of the day for me and then after that we're going to go through some of her possessions and um, we're going to sort through through things and um, yeah so there's not going to be a lot of time for me to actually celebrate my pagan festivals or you know my pagan celebration as I usually do as a solitary witch most of the time um, so yeah but I mean even when I don't get a chance to do things on the day uh, like I often don't I will usually do things by myself when I do get a chance so I put things off and, or I postpone things or I just do them when I when I am gonna have time if there's something else on so that's not a problem at all and I quite often do um, because you know I get into um, commercial Halloween a little bit so I often have commercial Halloween or Aussie Halloween on the 31st of October and then I will have Beltane on the 1st of November so that's often what I do and um, it's similar to when it's actually Sawain I usually usually will have Sawain on the 30th of April and then the 1st of May is actually my wedding anniversary so I celebrate my wedding anniversary on the 1st of May so um, yeah it's a, it's a lot of fun so to, to just kind of have both I have Sawain and Beltane twice a year because obviously my wedding anniversary is celebrating um, love and fertility and that kind of thing um, in the form of my wedding anniversary so I will be um, my husband and I have been married for six years now so we celebrate that each year and um, yeah but getting off track so I've got my altar decorated here and I've got this nice new black candle and then I've got my beeswax candles and if I can I might just show you a little bit of my setup at the moment if I can get my camera going but I'll just show you some of the things that I've got on my altar this year so I've got this beautiful piece of mahogany obsidian I'll just see if I can show that off it's got this beautiful mahogany colour with the beautiful, with some nice black bits and it comes into this nice point. So I'm not sure if I'll use that in a magical tool at some stage, but at the moment I'm just loving having it on my altar and keeping it with some of my tarot cards. And I've got, I just love that piece so much that I went back to the shop and I bought three more pieces. <laughs> so I'm going to arrange those on my altar. And... When I bought the first piece, I was like, hmm, what is this for? And this one's got a really nice little transparent bit there in that in the end of it. It's gorgeous. Oh yeah, that's better, so you can see them better over here. Yeah. So I thought to myself, hmm, what is this gonna be for? And then I saw a video not long after that that was uploaded about cord cutting so I thought that's perfect that's what it's for it's for etheric and psychic cord cutting which we all need to do um, you know from time to time with either substances or relationships or situations in our lives or things that we have addictions or habits or what have you to and even relationships in our lives that are good we need to do that cord cutting to make sure that that relationship doesn't become toxic or that we're not um, draining more than we're taking or that the other person isn't draining from us and that the relationship stays healthy like we cut those unhealthy cords and it's a little bit of a new age concept but as a witch I find it really really helpful to as something to get into in my practice so that's what I've been using this mahogany obsidian for because it does come in this beautiful kind of um, sharp shape and yeah so that's what I'm using that for and I've got one of my sets of mala beads down here which I use a lot of the time when I'm doing my spiritual practice. I um, will do a, an affirmation or a mantra or something on my mala beads. And this is the journal that I'm using at the moment. I recently just filled up a full journal. So I'm using this um, Stark Game of Thrones journal from Insight. And it was really cool. I was reading about it and they actually donate um, some trees for every tree that they cut down they'll donate some more trees so I was just like that is so great and on the back it says winter is coming so 
yeah, I love this one. I also have a Harry Potter um, Deathly Hallows journal that I was choosing, trying to choose between this one and that one, but I did decide to go with this one first. So I'm using my Stark's Game of Thrones journal because I really love House Stark. They are my favourite Game of Thrones house. And um, yeah, I just can't wait until April so Game of Thrones starts again. But I've been thinking of starting reading the books, so maybe I'll do that. And um, so yeah, I've got some more crystals here. I've got my lovely big chunk of black tourmaline that I release negativity with. And I've got this other nice shard of um, snowflake obsidian. I've actually had this one for years, but I got it out again when I bought my new shards of um, mahogany obsidian. So they are friends now. <laughs> and I've got my black obsidian palm stone heart. So that's really beautiful to meditate with as well. And I've just got... Um, so I've been reading the book Rise, Sister, Rise. Again, it's a little bit new agey, but um, I'm finding it really, really nice to read. And with everything that uh, has been going on with the end of my mother-in-law's illness and seeing her um, really go downhill and with her recent passing, I'm really just doing everything that I can that makes me feel good and that gets me by in my spiritual practice and I'm just making no apologies for that. So that's really where I'm at right now with everything that I've had going on. And with the new baby and coping with adjusting to life as a family of four now and everything like that, like, yeah. And um, I've got the Star Child Tarot. This is the um, Akashic Edition and the Limited Edition Starseed Box, which I'm really happy to have. I did originally have the original Star Child Tarot, which I featured in another video, but I no longer have that one now. I decided that I would liquidate that little asset <laughs> and I um, used the money to buy some other decks that I wanted. So I bought all of the Lucy Cavendish and Jasmine Becker Griffiths decks. So I now have all four of those in my collection and I'm very, very happy with my decision to let go of that deck and um, to trade it. Or rather, I sold it and I used the money to buy other decks that I had on my wish list. So I'm really, really happy that I did that. And I've got this new piece of um, amethyst that I bought. And that's got five little points. So I'm thinking I may use this to make a tool at some stage. I might make a little selenite wand or something like that. Like glue it onto some selenite and make a wand. And... This is a very nice little piece of rainbow moonstone. I've wanted a rough piece of rainbow moonstone for ages. And so I've got this one now and it's really beautiful. I find it really, whoops, really balancing and oh, I just love it. And I've got this shell. Um, it's just got this nice smooth purple side, which I just love. I just, I don't know, it makes me feel good. It's kind of a mindfulness exercise to touch it. It's kind of like calcite do you ever ha buy a piece of calcite and you just play with it and it feels so nice and smooth and it's just beautiful it's kind of like that and then there's this tiny little piece of demeritite or demeritite i think that's how you say it but it's just a tiny little piece and it's got this little triangle at the end yeah there you go and the other tarot deck that i've been working with is the mary l tarot and I've had this one for a while now, but um, yeah, I'm just, I'm still learning how to work with this one. I'm loving the artwork, I'll say that much, but the actual voice of this deck has been a little bit elusive to me. I'm still learning how this deck communicates and how it gets its message across and um, how to actually interpret the messages that come forth from this deck. But um, I am very glad to have it in my collection and I've actually slowed right down on collecting tarot since I bought this deck just for that reason that I am still learning the ropes with it. So um, that's a, that's been a good thing, I think. Um, yeah, I don't know if I've bought any decks since I bought that one. I've bought Oracle decks, like yeah, I sold my original edition Starseed, uh, Star Child Tarot and I got my Oracle decks, but... Yeah, I don't think I've bought any actual tarot since then. So, yeah, that's um, something that I've been up to. And, okay, I'll just see if I can... I'm doing selfie mode with my camera here. So that'll be interesting. So this is my 
current altar set up. I've got my Kanunos. He's green, so he is um, both Kanunos and the green man. Just see if I can get a better shot of him. So yeah, and then I've got my Millennial Gaia. So that is the Millennial Gaia by Oberon Zell, and because she's green, I also think of her as Green Woman. So I have Green Man and Green Woman. And I've got my chalice there, and that's on top of a metal pentacle. And then I've got a stone pentacle here. And then this was my first ever pentacle, and it's just in shadow, so you probably can't see it that well. But it's made of cardboard. And I painted it myself, and it's just a little cardboard box that I painted and then varnished. And that's got some special items in it. And then I've got, like, my singing bowl and a bunch of stuff. This, oh, okay, I'll show you, I'll show off this in a second. I'll just wait, leave that till last. And I've got this nice vetiver candle. Vetiver is a really interesting essential oil. It kind of doesn't smell the best. But the relaxing powers of vetiver are something kind of like lavender on steroids or something. Like, it's just so relaxing. And this is my latest oracle deck. That is the Divine Circus Oracle. And when I first got this, I was like, I don't know if I like it. There's so many clowns in it. Like, I'm sure you can find a review or a reveal or a, an unboxing of this deck somewhere that will show off all the cards. Because I don't really have time for that right now. But... There's a lot of clowns in it, and oh, there's that freaky thing going on right now with clowns too. Like there's <laughs> there's scary clowns everywhere. People are dressing up as clowns and freaking people out. But yeah, this deck has got some really beautiful images in it as well as the <laughs> as the clowns. But they're not creepy clowns. They're cute clowns at least. So that's good. Um, yeah, and I've got some myrrh here. This is what I've been burning as incense. And then I've got my incense burner here. So that's a nice little copper incense cauldron. And what I actually use in my incense burner, um, this might help someone, so I thought I would share it. But I use little cut up, or rather broken up pieces of pumice stone. So when you're at the beach and you find a pumice stone, just take it home and smash it with a hammer. And that, I've found, is the best thing to put under your charcoal blocks when you're burning loose incense. So that is what I use. And I've got my obsidian sphere here sitting on its little stand. And I've got some black salt here, which I've been charging for a magical purpose. I've got my little bag here that's got my chakra set of stones in it. And that's just one that I made up myself. I selected a stone for each chakra intuitively. Um, so it's not like one of those sets that you can buy with the symbols printed on it or anything like that. And then I've got like my little smudge set here. So when I'm not burning my myrrh incense, I burn either some sage or some palo santo, depending on what, what the working calls for. I've got some beeswax candles here, some more beeswax candles. A little bottle that I've been meaning to make up a spell oil with. And then I've got my owl um, oil burner. So I put an oil melt in that. And at the moment it's got a vanilla bourbon one in it. It smells amazing. And yeah, so I've just got, I've got a wand here that I've been meaning to work on and some stuff. And some shells and some pendulums and crystals and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, I'll just put this one back. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with how I've got my altar set up at the moment. I don't feel like I need to buy any more tools as such, just, you know, the usual little bits of crystals and um, incenses here and there and what have you. So um, yeah, I hope that you have liked my video explaining about what I do for Beltane and um, just my little bit of a life update and why I haven't been making videos so much. Uh, but I am hoping to get in, back into making videos. I've, I've got some more stuff to share. Oh, oh, yes, I was going to share this. So this was from Belladonna and Bones. So 
came in this gorgeous little black box that she put a wax seal on. So that's her wax seal with her little um, trademark or symbol, I guess, on them. And these nice black ribbons. And it is, it was a limited edition set. It was strictly limited to 13. And it is the Orificium Limited Edition Enchanter's Working Trio. Um, so yeah, it came with three products. And I've used it already. Oh, and I'm going to have to go because my husband just got home with the kids. So that is a tincture of myrrh and gold, the Orium. And I've used that already on some candles. And then we've got the Enchanter's Suffumigation, which I guess is a more witchier and less, um, <laughs> um, oh, my kid's talking a tantrum. I have to go. Okay, and then there was also the Flying Ointment. And I've got to do another video sometime about my experiences working with these. But I'll just go now. Okay, bye.